Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one play Oba Yozo, a depressed young man who feels negatively differentiated by his self-concept, social anxiety, and experiences with sexual abuse, poverty, addiction, and suicide, is the protagonist of No Longer Human, an eye novel. The narrative is bookended by an unnamed narrator who only knows Yozo through photographs and notebooks. In the prologue, the narrator remarks on Yozo's grotesquely empty expressions in the photographs. Yozo's self-perception as a child is that he is different from the people around him. He admits to having never felt hungry and being perplexed by certain social behaviors. Yozo feels threatened by other people because he believes he is incapable of understanding even basic human motivations. In order to mediate his interactions with others, he creates a comedic persona. He and his siblings are gathered in the parlor one night before his father's monthly visit to Tokyo. Their father asks them what they want for Christmas and records their responses in a notebook. Yozo is unable to respond because he does not want anything but is also afraid of disappointing his father. His father suggests a lion dance mask, but his patience and good humor both fade when Yozo responds with silence. Fearing his father's wrath, Yozo searches in the middle of the night for his father's notebook to make a last-minute addition, cheering up his father. Yozo explains that, despite his comedic social exterior, his true self is the polar opposite of comic. He strongly implies that the maids and manservants are sexually abusing him, but he does not believe that telling anyone would make a difference. Teikaichi, a high school student, says that one of Yozo's comedic pratfalls is a deliberate blunder. Yozo attempts to befriend Teikaichi, fearing that he will expose him as a fraud. Yozo successfully drags Teikaichi to his house for shelter one rainy day. Teikaichi's ears have become infected due to the rain, so Yozo cleans them. Teikaichi compliments Yozo awkwardly, telling him that many women will fall for him. Teikaichi brings a reproduction of Van Gogh's self-portrait, dubbed, The Picture of a Ghost. Yozo, intrigued, shows Teikaichi a book of Modigliani reproductions, which he enjoys. Yozo has an epiphany, Art can be used to paint the dark and damaged side of human beings if it is honest. He starts painting self-portraits, which he shows to no one except Teikaichi, who predicts that Yozo will become a great painter in the future. Despite Yozo's desire to attend art school, his father enrolls him in a Tokyo college to train as a civil servant. Yozo frequently skips classes to read, paint, or attend an art class in Hongo. Horiki, a sensualist who introduces Yozo to the pleasures of alcohol, tobacco, and prostitutes, meets him in art class. He also drags Yozo to a clandestine communist meeting, which Yozo begins attending on a regular basis because he enjoys the atmosphere. His father sells the house at the end of Yozo's term in Tokyo. Yozo is then transferred to a lodging house, where he discovers that he lacks the ability to manage his finances on his own. He resorts to pawn shops and letter begging, but the money always disappears. The school then informs his father of Yozo's absence, and Yozo receives a letter from his older brother, who warns him about his bad behavior. At this point, he meets a hostess named Suniko in a Ginza cafe. She takes Yozo to her house after treating him to some liquor and bad sushi. Suniko's obvious misery elicits Yozo's sympathy, and the two share a night that makes Yozo happy. Yozo, however, abandons Suniko because he is uneasy about the possibility of great joys. He returns to the cafe a month later with the drunken freeloader Horiki. Horiki initially intends to kiss Suniko but is repulsed by her impoverished appearance upon closer inspection. Yozo is moved by sympathy for Suniko and consumes alcohol until he passes out. He awakens the next morning in Suniko's room, where Suniko proposes a double suicide. Yozo readily agrees. They both jump into the sea, but only Yozo survives. Yozo's suicide attempt enrages his family, but Yozo is only concerned with Suniko. He is interrogated by police after being released from the hospital. He calls a man named Flatfish, a subordinate of his father's, to assure him. The police then take him to the district attorney's office for questioning, where he pretends to cough up blood. The district attorney sees through Yozo's act and reminds him of Teikaichi. Yozo is mortified by his embarrassment. Yozo is expelled from college and relocates to Flatfish's house, where he is not permitted to leave. When Flatfish asks what Yozo wants to do, he says he wants to be a painter. The next morning, Yozo flees to Horiki's house, where he is met with hostility. There, he meets Shizuko, a widow who lets Yozo live with her and her daughter while also providing him with work as a cartoonist. His worsening depression eventually drives him to abandon Shizuko and seek refuge in a bar in Kaibashi. He meets the young and virginal Yosiko at a cigarette shop, who convinces him to quit smoking. 
They marry and have a brief domestic bliss. Their happiness, however, is short-lived due to Horiki's visits, which cause Yozo to relapse into alcoholism. Horiki and Yozo witness Yosiko being sexually assaulted by an acquaintance one night while playing a game of categorizing nouns as comic or tragic. Yosiko becomes a nervous and anxious wreck as a result of the incident. Yozo is eventually hospitalized after ingesting a box of sleeping pills. His deteriorating physical condition prompts him to seek a pharmacy after being discharged, where he obtains some medicine and morphine. He is assured that morphine is no worse than alcohol, but he develops a terrible addiction to the drug very quickly. His debt mounts as a result of his addiction, and he is forced to beg for more morphine doses. He writes to his father for help with his addiction, unable to bear it any longer. Instead, Flatfish and Horiki pay him a visit and check him into a mental institution. After being discharged, Yozo learns that his father has died. He relocates to the country to recuperate under the supervision of an older woman hired by his brother. The epilogue is told by the same unnamed character who described Yozo's photographs in the prologue. On a trip to see an old friend, the narrator ran into an old acquaintance, the madam of a bar in Kayabashi he had visited before the war. Despite the fact that the narrator had never met Yozo, the madam gave him the notebooks and photographs he had sent her. The next day, the narrator asked to borrow the notebooks he had been reading all night. The madam agreed, and the narrator inquired whether reading Yozo's notebooks had caused her to cry. She replied that they hadn't, and that she had simply assumed humans were ineffective when they turned out like Yozo. Nonetheless, she thought Yozo was a good boy. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.